raise a question, we would appreciate if you would let us know your name and your organization or which faculty you are from. Our mic runners are here, so please raise your hand to indicate your interest to speak. Hello, Professor. Thank you very much for your speech. I think we're in, enlightened, you know, for the spend. Okay, I'm uh, Alan Tang, and uh, I'm the founder of uh, Corporate Finance Management Association of Hong Kong. I think, you know, uh, your idea is very good, and uh, I, I would like to ask, because I opened the two bank in Hong Kong, and I know exactly what's going on. And Canada, as you said, and Hong Kong, we rarely have uh, uh, bankruptcy for banks. Uh, for us, it's a great surprise if any bank has a problem. It means there must be a very good you know, uh, way to avoid the crisis. Uh, uh, I, my, my question is, uh, besides regulation, do you think management in banking, that's number one, huh, is also one of the solutions, uh, good management? And number two, number two, Banking as uh, an enterprise, okay, on the one side, but is that possible if banking become a pure surfacing uh, vehicle instead of uh, uh, for risk taking, you know, uh, uh, enterprise? Uh, that's my. So can can I make sure I understand the second question? What, what do you mean by a pure service vehicle? Should I, should I use a mic to answer? Oh, I, I actually have, still have to. <laughs> Didn't realize it was still working. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, would, would, so the first question was, would, would having better management in banks help? Uh, of course, uh, if, if you have uh, better people working in, in any industry, the quality of that industry's output will improve. So I, I'm certainly in favor of bank managers being trained well and being selected well, uh, but I don't think that's enough. Uh, and the reason I say that is that if you review the argument that I was uh, presenting this afternoon, you'll see that I was assuming that bankers were behaving perfectly optimally for their banks. They were, they were acting precisely in the way that would further the profits, the expected profit, of their banks. That's, that, that's what you want, that's what banks want their managers to do. Uh, the problem arose because of the externality that one bank's activity had for other banks, which now, you might say, well, why doesn't the original bank take into account the effect that it's having on the other banks? The reason it doesn't do that is that it doesn't have any incentive to. It, if, if my actions are causing your profits to go down, 
and I don't, I'm not sharing your profits, I don't have any financial incentive to, uh, to take into account your, your bottom line. And so I see the, the problem as one of uh, a failure in the rules, not a failure in the participants. The participants are, are, are doing what they're supposed to do, but the rules of the game, how much risk they can take, how much leverage they can take, are not set optimally. If you, if you change those parameters so that they are chosen optimally, then you'll get a good outcome. That, that, that's, my primary, that's my primary lesson. Uh, now you were uh, uh, also suggesting that, that uh, perhaps the days when banks looked out for their customers uh, in, a, in a paternalistic way might be over, uh, that banks are perhaps less attached to their customers. That, that's certainly true. Uh, and uh, one way we see that is that these days when banks make loans, those loans are often sold to other banks who have no connection at all with the, with the borrowers. Uh, and these new banks first can't really fulfill the sort of monitoring role that traditionally uh, banks were doing. But also, it means that the initiating bank uh, doesn't, may not take as much care when it initiates the loan to make sure that it's a good loan, because it's just going to sell it to someone else anyway and not have to worry about it. So, so the, the, the idea that loans are bought and sold so much, again, that, that has some good effects for the economy, but it, it does uh, aggravate the, the moral hazard problem that I was discussing. And therefore, um, it means that there has to be regulation for that, too. Uh, the, 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 at the end of the day, the moral of this is that contrary to what Alan Greenspan, uh, the former chairman of the U.S. Fed, said, financial markets are not self-regulating. They have to be regulated by third parties. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Professor Maskin, you were for a very insightful lecture and then. Okay, well, do I think that there's going to be another uh, meltdown like the one in 2007, 2008? I don't think there's going to be one anytime soon. And the reason is that the, that the leverage ratios now are, are very low. Uh, bank, uh, in, in fact, we have the opposite problem. In 2006, we had too much leverage. Remember, leverage is the amount of money that banks are borrowing from other banks in order to make loans. We had, 
we had leverage ratio, staggeringly high leverage ratios, 30 to 1, 40 to 1, 50 to 1, 50 borrowed dollars for every dollar of, that you were, the bank was putting in of its own money. Uh, now leverage it has returned to, uh, to much more normal levels, and it's actually a bit on the low side. So uh, the problem now is that we're not getting enough investment. We're not, get, we're not getting enough loans. Uh, and the, the, the recovery from the financial crisis has been very slow, and banks uh, have too much cash, which they're just holding on to rather than lending out. Uh, central banks, again, can help with that by trying to uh, stimulate activity, lower interest rates. Of course, negative interest rates are an unusual uh, policy step to take, but maybe uh, Maybe that's worth a try. There are, there are other things that central banks can do besides just play with interest rates. They can also trade securities as, uh, as a way to increase uh, economic activity. Uh, the, the short answer to your question is the current situation is very different from the situation in, that led up to the crisis. And I don't think we're in danger of repeating the pre-crisis situation sometime soon. But we will, someday we will be in that situation again. And I hope by then we haven't forgotten what happens uh, when leverage ratios get too high. Uh, it, was, it was because we had forgotten that the lessons of the 1930s that the most recent crisis occurred. The last question. Professor in front, please. Uh, Professor Maskin, uh, my name is Keith Wong. I'm from the School of Economic and Finance, at this university. Uh, I'm just reading from the lecture that the uh, source of the crisis from the credit market externality. And this externality lead to prevailing problem. We have excessive uh, leverage as a result. Uh, solution to resolve providing problem is to internalize the cost, right? So it, it seems to me, you know, it was implied, you know, we should consolidate the banking industry. We just need a monopoly bank, then there will be no providing problems. But of course, you also mentioned, if the bank is big, then the bank may not be fully diversified, and thus we need smaller banks to achieve better diversification. Yeah. So what well, we, yeah. yeah. Uh, just to interrupt, you also, uh, another benefit of having small banks is that you get some competition. What, uh, 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 one, one problem with having all banking activity run by a single bank is there's no pressure on that bank to get things right. You, uh, as an economist, I believe that it, performance is improved when there's competition. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's a very standard reason for getting more banks uh, to get uh, banks to perform uh, up to maximum level. Thank you very much. Professor Maskin and Professor Steve, please.